Welcome to Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. Today our focus shifts from Blue Springs in Greene County, Tennessee, to Sterling's Plantation at Point Coopie Parish in Louisiana for the Battle of Sterling's Plantation, otherwise known as the Battle of Four Dock Bridge, that occurred on September 29, 1863. In an effort to distract the Confederate response of Union General Nathaniel Banks' led invasion of Texas, Union Major General Francis J. Heron's division of the Army of the Frontier was transferred to the Union 13 Corps and moved to Morganza, Louisiana, to distract the Confederate Brigadier General Tom Green and Confederate Brigadier General Alfred Mouton's divisions, who were operating on the upper Atchafalaya River. Out of the Union forces, Lieutenant Colonel Joseph B. Leak and 100 men from his 20th Iowa Volunteer Regiment, along with brigades from the 19th Iowa Volunteer Regiment led by Major John Bruce and the 26th Indiana Infantry Regiment under the command of Colonel A.D. Rose. In addition, Commander Battery B, 1st Missouri Light Artillery, and finally a battalion from the 6th Missouri Volunteer Cavalry led by Major Samuel Montgomery, along with other troopers assigned. The total Union force was about 650 men were posted at the Fort Dock Bridge at Sterling's Plantation. The purpose was to guard the main road that led to the river. Meanwhile, Confederate Brigadier General Tom Green and his 3,000-strong Atchafalaya River forces were dispatched when it realized how small the Union force was. In an unfortunate turn of events, while the Union pickets noted increasing Confederate forces, General Heron was incapacitated due to sickness, and General Leak took no action. By September 28th, Heron turned over command to Major General Napoleon J.T. Dana as he retired to New Orleans to recover. While this was occurring, Confederate General Mouton was put in charge to lead the attacks. The Confederate forces crossed the river by ferry on the evening of September 28th. The units involved were Waller and Roundtree's cavalry, along with Sims' battery. Following them were Spate Mouton's infantry brigades, and finally the 4th, 5th, and 7th Texas Cavalry, completed the crossing by 1 a.m. in the morning in the pouring rain. Mouton and Spate began to move through the trails leading to the bridge, and the assault began on September 29th. Mouton was designated the interdiction force, whose purpose was to stop any Union reinforcements. The remaining Confederate forces marched past the Norwood House and towards Fort Dock Bridge, and by 11 a.m. started skirmishing with the Union cavalry acting as a picket force for almost an hour. By noon, the fighting had started in earnest. Unfortunately for the Union, there were some bad leadership calls, and the Union artillery were out of position and unable to engage in the fight. This left only 450 men to defend, and while the Union forces fought hard, they were slowly being pushed back to the levee. Constant assault pinned the Union forces down, and eventually the Confederate cavalry pushed the Union picket cavalry away and rejoined the attack. When the Union soldiers realized the Confederate cavalry was returning, and that they were outnumbered, and their leaders had disappeared, and the troopers were surrounded, the Union soldiers then ended up surrendering. The Union troops, suffering 515 casualties, included 16 killed, 45 wounded, and 454 prisoners. The Confederate troops suffered 121 casualties, including 26 dead, 85 wounded, and 10 missing. The prisoners from this battle were eventually sent to Camp Ford Prison Camp near Tyler, Texas where they would sit out the rest of the war. Join us again next time on Things You Should Know, Civil War Edition. <music>